On this episode of Air Capital Hot Rod Garage, we're going to work on my wife's minivan. That's right guys, we're going to take a break from the Chevelle and the C10 and whatever else I normally work on. And we're going to do a little bit of work on the minivan. So the problem is, and you'll get this, you know, maintenance on just about any vehicle that you have. Uh, so the problem we're going to fix today is... Uh, replacing the clock spring in the steering column. So um, the airbag light has been on for years and the horn recently stopped working and I got a device, uh, OBD2 uh, reader, um, and basically I checked the code on it and led me to figuring out that this is bad. So, never done this before. I'm going to tear it apart, put the new one in, and hopefully that fixes the airbag, fixes the horn, makes the stupid lights go away. So, we'll see how this goes. So, that's what we're going to do. I've already disconnected the battery. Um, for my research, I'm supposed to disconnect that, let it set for like 15 minutes uh, so that the capacitor is discharged. I don't know if that's really true. That's what I want to do. Um, it's been like half an hour and we're going to get started. So we'll get to it. All right, boys and girls, we're going to get digging into this. So first thing is you want to kind of straighten up your steering wheel. There's uh, two access panels um, back here on the back of the steering wheel. Um, on this one with your cruise control, it kind of comes through the one panel. One panel's over here. Hopefully just pop these out with a screwdriver. Even labeled left. Was easy step number one done uh, looks like there's a fairly good size uh, Torx bit up in here one on either side come in just straight in from the side so I'm gonna go grab my Torx bits looks like it's about a T30 T30 <clears throat> so if I didn't mention it this is a 2011 Toyota Sienna. You know, before we had kids, my wife was like, I'll never have a minivan. Then we had a kid. Uh, traded the cor sold the Corvette C5 uh, and got a G8 GT. 6 liter, 364 horsepower, it is cool, uh, had a second kid, traded the G8 in for the minivan, uh, that was back in 2012, and here it is 10 years later, well, we bought this in June, so the daughter's going to be 12, or sorry, that is going to be 10 um, in May. We got the van in June or July, so we've had it for almost 10 years. We put nearly 200,000 miles on it, and really no problems. So I loosened up those two uh, screws. just kind of uh, wiggled this up in there so got that out couple wires in here okay there's two wires on the back two wiring harnesses on the back of the um, airbag um, definitely want to be careful here on the back of this um, the electrical connectors you can probably see it here 
So what we're doing is you pull these yellow things out. So when you connect them, you push them in. So you pull them out. So you pull that, the yellow tab out, and you just pull the plug out. And then there's a ground wire. So there's the airbag. I'm gonna sit that down over there. Okay. Airbag's out of the way. That's kind of the dangerous part. Because um, if it goes off, it's probably gonna hurt you. So, um, so there's a nut in here. Um, and then the steering wheel itself is supplying to the shaft. So what we wanna do is create a mark on the shaft and the steering wheel so we know which orientation everything's in. So I'm gonna go get a marker for that. All right, got my marker here. We're gonna head and mark the shaft and the steering wheel all in a line. Okay. And I'll even get some on that nut. So quick tip, I mean, everything's pretty much straight up and down, right? I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of it too. Um, just in case, you know, something happens. Not gonna hurt. Now I'm gonna take a picture, kind of get the speedometer in there and everything, so I know that, you know, the steering wheel's tilted, you know, two degrees to the left or whatever. like that's a 19 millimeter not terribly tight so there's your nut All right, there's uh, quite a bit of wires in here, of course. So, then disconnect these. Also, that picture will help uh, reconnecting these. Okay, so there's your steering wheel controls, that harness. I don't think we really need to take anything else off. So, hopefully, you know, Steering will just pull off. Now, the video that I watched, they were working on a Honda, or sorry, a Toyota, and they were able to just pull it off, just like that. Uh, probably don't want to yank it out quite like that, but uh, nonetheless, we got her done. So there's the clock spring right there. That's what we're replacing. Steering wheel's off. Looks like two screws here. Take the cover off. Anyway, the video that I was watching, they were working on another Toyota and uh, they were able to pull the steering wheel off. So, Otherwise, other vehicles might have to use a steering wheel puller. Not exactly sure how all this comes off. It looks like it separates right here. So. There we go. There's one half of it. And then this other half. 
probably drop it down just like that. Woo! All righty. clips and some more wires all right so I got this off kind of destroyed notice on here there's this yellow or orange thing here that said that the clock spring is um, centered so Turn these around look pretty similar with all the plat the tabs look to be in the same place and what do you know the part numbers match uh, 89245 now <clears throat> this one from Toyota I think it was $400 what I found and I couldn't find it anywhere else except on eBay and I think this was about $120 so, same part number. Um, I did some research to find this part number because obviously I didn't tear this apart and then look at the part number and then find it. So, took my chance. Uh, got lucky. So, that in there made it upside in place so there's two little plastic tabs here that slide in there and then there's pl ta plastic tabs down here that uh, pop it into place all right so done with that all right so put this lower piece on thing we're gonna take our steering wheel back okay now where do these wires go through I think they go through the top here right and looks like we need to go ahead and remove this yellow or orange thing so since it's already installed and everything and go ahead and take it out. You don't want to take this out if it's not already on the shaft. Slide that through there. All right. Go ahead and get these splines lined up. So those splines, I mean, there's one. And that's obviously wrong. That's right. That's wrong. So, I mean. They're pretty fine, but you know, you should be able to figure it out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put my nut back on. Get my ratchet here, maybe. Right behind. Don't know what the torque specs are but it's all of it all right so <clears throat> a couple plugs plug in here just go down here plug in here all right looks pretty good 
Let's refer to our picture just because we have it. Okay, yep, looks like wires. These wires were going on top, down around there. Three wires there. Yep, and even I, I torque this down, tighten it down. Even my mark on top of the nut lines up, so I think we're good there. So now, uh, these two Torx bolts, they're still there. So we're going to take this. Okay, there's again uh, the plugs. They're, they're color coded, so orange and black. And there's the ground wire. I'm going to hook up the ground wire first. Now, I'm. Um, if you noticed, I kind of scooted over. You know, when you're messing with airbags, there's probably always a chance that it could go off. Um, you know, it shouldn't go off, but you know, you never know. Want to be careful for sure. Uh, so I'm trying to be careful here. And so if it goes off, I want to keep your head out of the way. Pulling the uh, plastic tabs out here. Don't know if you really have to or if, uh, if these will just snap on without them. Okay. These are directional, so there's up and down. It looks like. There we go. That uh, the black connector with the yellow thing. When I pushed the yellow thing in, it wasn't wanting to click all the way down. So these are pretty tight. Now put that in place. Wiggle it in there. <clears throat> Get my torx bit again. Yep, that feels like a cock. So run that in there. Run that in there. Definitely don't want to cross thread those. Alright. That feels pretty solid. So get my ratchet here. basically done. Pop these back in. Alright. 
All right. There we go. Um, going to go plug the battery back in and we'll see if there's still a check engine light and see if the horn works. Hey, the horn works now. And there's no ABS or airbag light. So there we go. That's how you change the clock spring in the steering column of a 2011 Toyota Sienna minivan. Uh, it's pretty a basic, basic thing. Uh, it took me about, not quite even a half an hour. Um, just taking my time, working real slow, being careful and cautious not to go jab the airbag so that it uh, doesn't go off. You don't want that to happen. Uh, disconnect the battery for sure. Wait 15 minutes. Uh, basically two screws um, to get the airbag module out. Uh, a big nut on a Toyota to get the steering wheel off. Disconnect some stuff and then put it all back. Um, pretty simple. So good luck and hopefully this is helpful.